watch it. Okay. So for number 33, all right, they say determine the moles of CO2 and H2O formed when two moles of ethane are reacted with 10 moles of oxygen. So what I always like to do is I like to figure out what I've got, okay, and then I label. So I have two moles of this guy and I have 10 moles of this one. I'm going to zoom in because there's no way I can write that small. All right. Okay. So we have two moles and we have 10 moles. Um, I need to know which one is going to run out first. Most likely, which one is probably going to run out first because you guys know about combustion. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> so what is floating around in this air, in the room? Oxygen. oxygen. So usually oxygen tends to be your one in excess and then you're supplying a certain amount of fuel. So usually your limiting reactant is going to be your fuel, but we got to verify that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, I'm showing you the long way first. Okay, and then I'll show you the shortcut, and you are more than welcome to use the shortcut. So, this is when you're trying to verify, not verify, um, yeah, like show what it means, okay? So we're gonna start with two moles that was given to us of ethane, okay? I bring those words down to the right, And I'm going to relate it to whichever product I want to. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. I usually just pick the first one because it's first. So I'm going to relate them to carbon dioxide. Fact is, is no matter what, it's going to make the least amount of both products. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. You pick the easiest one, the one that you know, like, your molar mass for, most likely, and stuff like that. Okay? So, um, so here I'm going to go ahead and go to moles of CO2. What is this called when you're doing stoichiometry? Mole bridge, right. This is your ratio or mole bridge. This is where coefficients go, okay? So here in our problem, we see that we have a two and we have a four. So we're gonna put two and four, and this is really, really hard math. So two times four divided by two is? Ooh. Four. Okay, thank goodness, woo. All right, so this one is making four moles of CO2, okay? All right, the other one, we're going to start with the 10. So you start with what they give you. I'm going to have 10 moles of O2. Okay. I bring those words down to the right. I'm going to cross that mole bridge again, as long as you test the same product. So you can pick whichever product, but it has to be the same for both. Okay. Once again, we're going to put our coefficients here. So we see a 7 for our oxygen and a four for our carbon dioxide. So if we do 10 times four divided by seven, comes out to be, is it 1.25? You, you guys all have calculators, right? Okay, what is it? 5.7. 5.7, okay. Yeah, okay, all right, cool. So, good thing I didn't say 1.25. <laughs> All right, so looking at these two numbers, who ran out first? C2. Yep, our ethane, just like we predicted, right? So this one, what I always like to do, it's always like, makes me feel good. So I'm like, yeah, I don't care about you. All right, and then you are gonna continue on with the information um, that only deals with the ethane, okay? And so um, they are only asking for moles, which is nice. So we're done with carbon dioxide. We just have to go and um, do the same thing for the water. Okay, and water has a six coefficient. And this is hard math too. So two times six divided by two is? Six. Yeah, there we go, all right. And then you're done, okay? Now, typically, we don't give it to you moles and ask for moles, okay? We're going to give it to you in grams and probably ask for grams because that's more applicable to um, your lab. So, um, so just keep this basic idea, but know that it expands to grams on both sides, okay? So the shortcut, okay, your little shortcut is that you want to make sure you're in moles. So just like I said, we start in grams usually. 
You want to make sure your grams are moles. How do we do that? We divide by who? Right? So you divide by molar mass. Okay? And then as soon as they're in moles, who remembers the next step? Actually, let me just put little steps there. Does anybody remember from the summer video? You divide by somebody. Divide by coefficients. Okay? And that's what makes it so nice, is you don't have to do too much. You don't have to do railroad tracks or anything. You divide by molar mass, make sure everybody's in moles, okay? And then you're just going to divide by their coefficients. So, for example, in this top one, um, it's actually even simpler. It's already in moles for you. We could have done 2 divided by 2, which is what, you guys? 1, right? And then we could have done... Um, divided by 7, which is more than 1, more than 1, okay? And so therefore you knew the ethane was your thing. All right, so we're going to use a shortcut in this next one real quick. Okay, so calculate the mass of calcium nitride formed when 50 grams of calcium are going to react with 50 grams of nitrogen. That's usually what it looks like. And somebody who's not familiar with chemistry would look at that and be like, we have the same amount of both. They're both going to do it. Right? But you guys know about what that's up there. Molar, mass. Molar masses are different, right? So they're, they're not equivalent. So we're going to go ahead and say 50 grams of calcium. To get it into moles, I'm going to divide it by its molar mass, which is, help me out, I forgot it again. 40.08. 40. 40. Thank you. Okay. What do you get? One point one point two five. There's the one point two five. <laughs> All right, moles of calcium. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the other one in to moles as well. So we're we're gonna do nitrogen. So 50 grams of nitrogen. What's the molar mass of nitrogen? It is not. Look very oh. carefully here. It's diatomic. it's diatomic. So what is it? 28-ish, right? Okay. So we're gonna do that. Somebody type that in. 1.79. Good. 1.79? We're good? Okay. All right, so both of these are now in moles for you. You're going to divide each of them by their coefficient. So calcium, we're going to put a 3 down here. This one, we're going to put a 1. So nitrogen's done. We know that it's 1.79. What is calcium's ratio showing? Point 0.4. You could have also just looked at it, right? Is 1.25 less than 3? Yes, when you have a smaller number on top, you know that it's going to be a decimal something, 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 right? Okay, but what, what did you guys get? Zero point what? Four two. Four two. Okay, I'll just put four two. All right, so looking at these two, who is your smallest one? Calcium. Calcium, therefore he runs out first. You don't care about nitrogen anymore, okay? That's how you use the shortcut, which in my opinion takes less time, and you don't have to think so hard. All right, so from here, um, you could use this 1.25 moles and then continue it to um, figure out your grams of calcium nitrate. There's the rest of the sentence. Okay, and so we would just kind of do it like that. And then we know that we have one mole of this guy is a about 148-ish, okay? And once you do that, you've now solved the, the problem, okay? So I know that was really quick. I do recommend if you need to slow down, go home, pause this video a couple times, okay? Um, that's showing you the shortcut way. Do you have to use a shortcut way? Absolutely not, okay? But if you want to, feel free to do it. You do not need to show me the long way unless I'm asking for your, a proof, okay? Or for you to explain a limiting reactant. Okay? Okay, cool.
15. Okay. All right. So let's see. Um, <clears throat> what I am going to give you over to is number 37. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you do some thinking here. Okay. I'm going to explain to you the logic and then I'm going to make you try it without me showing you how to do it. Okay. So it's going to be uncomfortable. Get over it. Good for you. Okay. So what you're going to do is um, read through this with me. So it says 0 0.003 grams sample of naphthalene, a compound containing only carbon and hydrogen. So this is a basic one. Soon you're going to have a carbon, hydrogen, oxygen compound. Okay. So this one, as long as we get the basics, we now can move on to what you're going to be expected of later. Okay. Okay, so it only contains carbon and hydrogen. So what I would say is I would say CXHY because we don't know what those subscripts are. You got to solve for those. Okay? Was burned in excess oxygen. So what kind of reaction is this right off the bat? Good, nice work. Okay, so we know the products of combustion are what? CO2 and H2O. Okay? All right, so the logic in this question, the whole thing that you need to think of is, is it true for me to say this carbon all became carbon dioxide? Yeah, where else does it have to go, right? I can't join the water crew and be like, hey, you guys. <laughs> right, yeah. So, um, and then does all this hydrogen become water? Yes. yes. Okay, so do we see where the oxygen one is going to be hard later? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. And that's where that question was on your guys' quiz. Okay. So um, so this is the whole idea that you're going to be using. So let me tell you what all these numbers are that they're giving you. This is your sample. This is your total sample size. Okay. This is your total sample size in grams. It's the mass of your sample. This is specific to carbon dioxide. So you are for sure making this much carbon dioxide out of that 0 0.003, okay? Okay. And then the formula weight, you're going to use this number on the very, very last step to get your molecular formula, okay? So knowing that and knowing that all this carbon becomes carbon dioxide, work backwards from carbon dioxide, and I want to see how far you can get. You guys have three minutes of thinking time, and then I'll have two minutes of talking time, okay? Okay. Okay, so to continue us on, um, we know that we have that sample of carbon dioxide um, in the products that has 0 0.0103 grams, that's how much is produced. And we know that all that carbon came from this molecule with a, you know, mystery subscripts. Um, and so we're going to also remind ourselves, because we're going to use it in just a few, that that guy was the 0 0.00300 gram sample. Um, so we're going to work backwards from carbon and we got to figure out our carbon dioxide. We got to figure out how much carbon that is. Okay. And then we're going to take that mass away from our total sample size. So it kind of makes sense. Um, so we're going to go 0 0.0103 grams of carbon dioxide. Okay. Bring my words down and to the right. Change into the mole. Okay. And then I know we're going to go mole of carbon dioxide into moles of carbon, and then we're going to get it back into gram language so we can use this information. Okay, and so we'll say mole carbon to grams of carbon. Okay, so to fill in these numbers, we know that anytime we have a mole gram combination, that's always your molar mass. So we know that one mole of carbon dioxide is about 44 grams. Um, and we know that one mole of carbon is about 12 grams. Okay. Here, what you're looking at is you're saying in every 
mole of carbon dioxide, how many moles of carbon are there? And there's only one carbon in there, so we're going to say one mole, okay? So using this, you're going to multiply all the guys across the top, so 0 0.0103 times 1 times 1 times 12. Go ahead and push equals, and then divide it by 44, because those ones are kind of redundant. So <clears throat> when you type that in, you get about 0 0.0028, and I'm going to round to three sig figs, so 281. Okay, you could also write this in um, scientific notation, so, and it might kind of make it look a little bit prettier, so we're going to go ahead and say 2.81 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, this is grams of carbon. So we've now know now we now we know that we have this amount in the grams of carbon. Okay, and we're gonna take it away from that total sample size here because if that much is the carbon, we get to assume the rest is obviously gonna be hydrogen. So we're gonna take the um and I'll go ahead and make this scientific too. Okay, so this will be. 3.00 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 2.81 times 10 to the negative 3 will be my grams of hydrogen, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. You get you get one point nine times ten to the negative four. Okay, of that um, of that total mass is going to be hydrogen. Okay, which should make sense. Okay, hydrogen's not too big of a a thing, and so um, it's not going to take up much of the mass. So, um, so now that we have our two grams of uh, the two elements, we are just going to proceed into empirical formula um, steps, okay? So looking here, we've got, um, we're going to start with carbon. So I have 2.81 10 to the negative 3. And if you want to keep working in decimals, you're more than welcome to. I'm just making it a little bit prettier. Um, so we do that divided by its molar mass in order to get it to moles. So remember, your empirical formula, we go grams to moles. You divide by the smallest. Okay, and then those are your subscripts. Okay, so that's, that's all that I'm doing right now. Okay, so we're going to do that. You're going to do 2.81 divided by 12, and we end up getting 2.34 times 10 to the negative 4, okay, moles. <clears throat> and then for hydrogen, we have 1.9 times 10 to the negative 4 all divided by 1. So it's really just 1.9 times 10 to the negative 4. So we're going to divide both of these by our hydrogen, okay? And so looking at these, we now have everything in moles. We're going to divide both of them by the smallest. Okay, so we obviously know our, so I should say negative four. Um, so our hydrogen is going to have that one. And if we type in the other, we get 1.23, okay? So this 1.23, I would round up to 1.25, okay? And looking at that, we know to get rid of this, we need to multiply everybody by 
4. So when we do that, um, because we have to have whole numbers, remember this is, what this is showing you right now is you have C1.25H, and that's just not something you see, right? So we need to multiply all of these guys by a 4 to give us now C5H4, which is going to be our empirical formula. Okay, so we're halfway there. We've determined the, the empirical formula, okay? And just, just a quick run through of what we did here. So we started with <clears throat> an equation. We had to know it was combustion. That allowed us to assume all carbon became carbon dioxide, all hydrogen became water. We took the amount that they gave us of carbon dioxide and we kind of worked backwards to figure out how much of this sample size was carbon. So we were able to find out that it was 2.81 times 10 to the negative 3, okay? So if that's all carbon, the rest of it has to be hydrogen. So we, we're going to take that total sample size and subtract our carbon, right? So this is our sample, and we subtracted carbon in order to get hydrogen, okay? And what that allowed us to have is now we're starting our empirical formula method with both grams, right? Now that we have that, um, once again, we did grams to moles. We divided both of them by the smallest, which was this number. That got us two numbers that should be our subscripts. 1.25 is not normal though, so we cannot leave that one. We had to multiply all of them by four to get rid of that. And the way the way we, you kind of think of that is there's four quarters in a dollar. You can kind of remember it that way. Um, and that allowed us to get to our empirical formula, C5H4. So now we're going to finish this problem up, okay? Um, <clears throat> and what I'm going to do, let me kind of slide this out of the way so we can make this big again. All right, so right now what we are sitting at is we have an empirical formula of C5H4, right? So that's what we've kind of left up on, okay? So, when we are trying to find your molecular formula, remember, you're going to get that from a molecular formula mass, which is usually given to you, and divide it by your empirical formula mass, which you will find using this information. That's going to give you a ratio, okay? And that you're going to multiply by the subscripts. Okay, so that's kind of what we're going to be doing here. So the molecular formula mass that they gave us was 128. So I'm going to say 128 units. Okay, and our import, empirical formula mass is going to be um, five carbons and four hydrogens. So we're at 64. So you can kind of actually look at this and kind of rounded to about two, right? And actually it's exactly two, I'm, I'm being silly. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly two. Um, so you could have typed it in or you just look at it, right? Half of 120 is 60, so. Anyway, um, so you have a ratio now of two. Let me rewrite that, okay? This two is now going to be multiplied by my two subscripts that are already there, okay? So that's gonna now give us C10H8. And this being molecular, right, we don't have, we don't reduce these down. That's how we have empirical formula, molecular formula. It's not like our ionic compounds where it always has to be reduced down. And that is it. So hopefully this kind of helped out. Um, run through it, pause it as you need to go along, remind yourself of this process, because like I said, in class today we're going to, or tomorrow we're going to, um, we're going to actually do one of these combustion ones with oxygen now, okay? So kind of keep this one in mind.